Hello. May I come in? The Surrogate is an early erotic thriller starring Shannon Tweed, an actress who would become practically synonymous with the genre once the direct-to-video boom hit. This was long before silicone implants and a name were enough to make a movie profitable, though. At this point, sex movies were still taking the plot and the acting seriously. For Shannon Tweed fans, this means that we get a glimpse of what might have been had she chosen the less lucrative, respectable actress route. Tweed stars as Lee Waite, a trust fund baby you can't trust. Baby. She and her husband Frank, played by Porky's and Dallas actor Art Hindle, are having sex troubles. Or rather, Frank is having a combination of impotence and rage issues. But you think I'm the problem, right? You can't stand to share the blame. If you're talking about sex, I'm ready and willing. <laughs> when you're able. Frank walks away to cool off and runs across his detective friend George, played by a remarkably subdued Michael Ironside. George is investigating another in a recent series of killings. I'd like to talk to you about the panel you sold me. Are you having problems with the electrical system? Yeah. I'll I've had it in six times. So I guess it's just performance issues all the way around for Frank. The next morning, Frank tells his therapist that he blacked out, a problem that appears to be recurring. His therapist prescribes a fantasist to help Lee and Frank find the same sexual stimulus. The description of the job is a real boner killer, though. Anouk Vanderlyn is a sexual fantasist. She will work with you and Lee to bring you to a harmonious level of sexual response by fantasy stimulation. When Lee freezes up as they're trying again, it's the last straw. Frank unilaterally calls Anouk Vanderlyn, the surrogate of the title. Lee vents to her friend Eric, played by one of the great drag queens of all time, Jim Bailey. This is the second time that we've seen Eric. The first was in his female persona leering at the crime scene when George and Frank were conversing. No one ever went broke preying on the audience's transphobia, I guess. Anook arrives and immediately comes across as some weird vagina whisperer. She teaches Frank how to touch Lee gently and sensually, which Lee is into, until she isn't. In the aftermath, Lee tells him that she feels dirty and doesn't want to do it anymore. Frank's therapist tells him that his rage issues are tied to his feelings of sexual inadequacy, and if they just solve the sex problem, they'll solve the rage problem. Frank is confused as to why anyone would enjoy seeing his wife with another woman. You know this is really early in Shannon Tweed's career because that's practically a staple of her later films. At dinner later on, Frank is ready to throw down when one of his friends openly flirts with Lee. She drags him away and they agree to talk about more therapy. She sees him talking with one of his female customers and storms out in a jealous fit. This leads to a hugely melodramatic scene where he nearly runs her over. <laughs> something of a shocking twist, it turns out Lee has been going to Frank's therapist all along. She admits that Anouk turned her on, but she's angry about the experience anyway. Eric scares the hell out of Lee before their friend date in a nod to Psycho. Fasten your seatbelts. It's gonna be a pumpy night. And you just know that the killer can't be Eric at this point because they're leaning so heavily into it. This includes George and his partner having a conversation about how big the female killer must be, only to cut immediately to Eric taking his Betty Davis makeup off. While Eric and Lee are out at the movies, Anouk stops by to hawk some sensual perfumes to Frank, but it's not long before she's teasing him and daring him to take her. He does so, but regrets it afterwards. She tells him that he learned a lot about himself, finally allowing the rage to take over and experiencing how bad it feels. So this is the sexual equivalent of catching your kids smoking and making them smoke the whole pack? Lee and Eric come home to find the apartment trashed. Lee just assumes it was another fit of rage. Frank tells her about a nook and she feels sorry for him. Lee secretly goes to see a divorce attorney, but she's having cold feet about following through. A nook shows up again, this time tying Lee up and threatening them both. Frank fights her off and suddenly everything is sunshine and roses again. Lee feels safe because he fought for her. Frank channeled his aggression in a healthy way. They both teamed up against a common enemy. Everything is copacetic between them. But now they have the problem of the psychotic nymphomaniac Anouk to contend with. 
Lee even speculates that Anouk is one of the therapist's other patients whom she lost control of. It would be just like the good doctor to use one patient against another for treatment. When the therapist winds up murdered as well, the killings get too close to home, and Frank sets out to find Anouk before she finds them. Of course, the film turns in a few more melodramatic twists with its final act. The film does a fine job of misdirecting us into thinking it's a fatal attraction precursor, when it's actually a Brian De Palma ripoff. This film is one of the few erotic thrillers to make it out of Canada in the 1980s, after the genre dominated the landscape with David Cronenberg a decade earlier. Don Carmody, who served as director of this film, was responsible for over a dozen Canadian cult films in the 70s and 80s. Starting in his mid-20s, Carmody produced Cronenberg's Shivers and Rabid, the Jamie Lee Curtis slasher Terror Train, and the classic teen sex comedy Porky's. One look at his IMDb credits shows that he's a prolific producer of films of all budgets and genres, and as of this video, he's still going strong. Basically, if it's even tangentially a Canadian production, Carmody has a hand in it. Lead actor Art Hindle is almost as prolific as Carmody, consistently cranking out the kind of small roles in big projects and big roles in small projects type of work that can keep an actor fed for years. Prior to the surrogate, Hindle turned in brief appearances in Black Christmas, The Brood, Invasion of the Body Snatchers, and most visibly Porky's. Carol Laurie is a French-Canadian actress who starred in a number of sex thrillers in the 70s, including the infamous Richard Speck-inspired Naked Massacre. Laurie only had a handful of English-language films that hit the States, and she never made a dent here the way she did in Canada. Oddly enough, the biggest star of the film at that point might have been Jim Bailey. Bailey had a prolific and storied career as a female impersonator, specializing in Julie Garland and Barbara Streisand. His performances took him all over the world, performing for the royal family and at the White House. Bailey only made it to the screen a handful of times, this being his largest role. His last television role was on the Callista Flockhart law drama Ally McBeal. Unfortunately, Bailey died of pneumonia in 2015 at the age of 77. Of course, the performer you all clicked for is Shannon Tweed. Tweed was only two years removed from being Playboy's Playmate of the Year, and she cashed in on that with three major feature film roles. The little seen Peter Weller rap movie of unknown origin, the highly seen star making Hot Dog the movie, and this film. Tweed seems mostly stifled in this role, being forced to play the frigid damsel in distress through most of the film. Yes, her body is gorgeous, but what separates Tweed from her peers is that she has a natural ease and charisma when given a chance. That's not present here because of the shrewish way Lee is written. Neither Lee nor Frank are sympathetic characters, but Lee comes off particularly bad, as we're meant to think that she constantly emasculates Frank over her wealth and his impotence. Now Frank's violent rages are hardly justified, but there are no real good guys here. The couple's constant preying on one another, their general resistance to doing anything constructive, and their rampant homophobia are reasons enough to wish they'd just go their separate ways. The film doesn't offer much in the way of thrills, either sexual or suspenseful. The serial killer subplot doesn't go anywhere, it's just sort of revealed at the end. Someone must have found the plot interesting, though, because Shannon Tweed would repeat this dynamic in at least three future films, sometimes reprising her role as the frigid housewife, and sometimes switching to the sex surrogate role. The surrogate swings and mostly misses, offering up nothing more than a titillating premise in a future softcore starlet. Next week, bit player Michael Ironside finds a role that's a bit more up his alley. 